Hey guys, it's me, Nicola Dickens with Free My Care. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel, whichever the case may be. So it has been a minute and, and I have to apologize. We are going to be going over the Jack Herrer story, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. We're going to be on chapter two today. Um, it has taken me a long time to get to chapter two simply because I wasn't feeling that great. You know, the surgery happened. I'm still healing. Found out from my doctor that I'll be healing for probably about a month or about a year. So I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. So it was one hell of a surgery, let me tell you. So <clears throat> before we jump this off, hopefully we can get my lighter started so we can have a, uh, a nice bang here. This is the Traveler eight inch uh, water pipe, water bottle pipe from Waxmaid, um, waxmaidstore.com if you're ever looking for them. But hopefully the uh, wind will allow this to happen today. Okay, come on. I don't think it take me like a million years to actually happen. So I apologize for the way that I pronounced Jack Herrer or Herrer, however I was pronouncing it, Herrer. I do apologize. I am horrible with names. I just do have to say that. So I do apologize. I hopefully will not birth butcher anybody else's name or his name again, but if I do, please correct me and I will apologize. Um, I hate when people mess up my name and I know other people hate it too, so I get it. Um, so let's jump right into this. So chapter two is kind of a little bit of a long chapter. I did a uh, pre-read and mark everything that I wanted to go ahead and bring out simply because it's a lot of really good information, but there's so much really good information in this, in this book that it is insane. So without further ado, chapter two of The Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Herrer. So a brief summary of the uses of hemp. Our challenge to the world, try to prove us wrong. If all fossil fuels and their derivatives, as well as trees for paper and construction were banned in order to save the planet, reverse the greenhouse effect and stop deforest deforestation, there, then there is only one known annually renewable natural resource that is capable of providing the overall majority of the world's paper and textiles meeting all of the world's transportation, industrial, and home energy needs, simultaneously reducing crop, uh, pollution, rebuilding the soil, and cleaning the atmosphere all at the same time. And that substance is the same one that did it all before. Cannabis, hemp, marijuana. 90% of all ships sailed since before the Phoenicians from at least the 5th century BC until long after the invention and commercialization of stem ships or of steamships mid to late 19th century were made from hemp. See the picture on the opposite page. So we used this picture in the last um, video too, so I'm not going to go all the way through it, but if you want to see it, it will be at the back page or I'm at the last, the very last uh, five minutes of um, chapter one. So it's all in here. It's there is a lot of uses of hemp and it's, you know, the maps that they use, clothes that they wear, the sails that they use, um, all the way down to some of their food items. That's all coming from hemp. So that, that's an, that's a major thing to, you know, that's an accolade there that, you know, you can have so many different things on one ship that is fueled and, and I don't know, and supported completely by one plant and that's hemp. It's something that we're not going to have to worry about if we tear it down. So if we plow these, these, these hemp crops down every once a year, you know, and process all of that, and then we redo them the next year, we're not chopping down our beautiful forests. Like you see where we're at today. We are not doing all of these things that are killing the environment. Um, I, and, I, and I would have to say that this would actually be more beneficial than AOC's um, Green Deal. Um, 
simply because we're not hurting another we're not we're, we're revitalizing the earth with cannabis we are not taking it down out here when you're in the wild like this and you see all of this growth and you know you can it, and it supports all the way from cactus to pine trees flowers to to grass for the cows to eat all comes from this one place um, and the more we cut this place down or make it smaller or or reduce the anchorage of how many of us are gonna be or how how's all that pollution gonna be be filtered out how is all of this stuff gonna be taken care of it's not creating smaller windows on homes is asinine in my opinion and the reason why is because now you've got to tear these homes down to rebuild you can't just make smaller windows it doesn't work that way I mean you can try but you open yourself up to some major air leaks you open yourself up to some major you know issues going down the line especially if it's not done correctly and any more in 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 any type of real estate you guys will you have to agree industry standard is as long as it holds up that first year you're golden and that's not something that hemp would do to us so I, I mean it's something that I want everybody to think about that's why I decided to read this book and thought there really is no better place to do that than a place like this so uh, the word can canvas is the Dutch pronunciation twice removed from French and La Latin of the Greek Greek word cannabis with a K K A N N A B I S so cannabis uh, Mediterra Mediterranean Basin Greek language derived from Persian and early Northern Semitics. Oh, it's a type of, of language. Okay, we don't need to go through that. We don't need to know that. In addition to canvas sales, um, until this century, virtually all the rigging, anchor, ropes, cargo nets, fishing nets, flags, shrouds, oakum, the main production for ships against salt water, used as a sealant between the outer and inner hulls of the ship were made from the stalk of a marijuana plant. Even the sailors clothes right down to the stitching on the Schumann's rope sold and sometimes canvas shoes was crafted from cannabis. Until the 1880s in, the, in, in America and until the 20th century in most of the rest of the world 80% of all textiles and fabrics used for clothing, tents, bed sheets and linens, rugs, drapes, quilts, towels, diapers, etc., etc., and even our flag, Old Glory, were, uh, were principally made fibers of cannabis. For hundreds if not thousands of years until 1830s, Ireland made the finest linens and Italy made the world's finest cloth for clothing and hemp. Although these facts have been almost forgotten, our forebears were, all, were well aware that hemp is softer than cotton, warmer than cotton, more water absorbent than cotton, has three times the tensile strength of cotton, and is many times more durable than cotton. Homespun cloth was al almost spun from fibers grown in the family hemp patch. In fact, when the patriotic real life 1776 mothers of our present day blue blood daughters of the American Revolution, the Dar of Boston and New England organized spinning bees to clothe Washington soldiers and the majority of the thread was spun from hemp fibers were, were it not for the industry forgotten or censored and currently dis, disparaged marijuana plant and the, the Continental Army would have frozen to death at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania if it wasn't for the marijuana plant. I totally read that wrong. I apologize. The covered wagons went west to Kentucky, India, Illinois, Oregon, and California, covered with sturdy hemp canvas tar tarpaulins. While ships sailed around the Horn to San Francisco on hemp sailed ropes, the original heavy duty famous Levi's pants were made from the California 49ers. Were made for the California 49ers. Hey, Raffi, Tigger, come! Okay, that, 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 I need to make a note of that because that has never happened before. They have never run off and actually listened to come back. Hey, Raffi, come here. Come lay down. They don't do that. That's weird. You guys eat a cookie when we get home. Um, uh, made for the original 
uh, California 49ers out of hemp sailcloth and rivets. This way the pockets couldn't rip and filled with gold panned from the sediment. Homespun cloth was almost always spun by people all over the world from fibers grown in the family hemp patch. In America, this tradition lasted until them lasted from the pilgrims until 1620s until hemp's, hemp's prohibition of the 1930s. In 1930, Congress was told, told by the Federal Bureau of Narcotics that many Polish Americans still grew pot in their backyards to make their winter long johns. The work the and work clothes and work clothes and greeted the agents with shotguns for stealing their next year's clothing crop. The age of density for hemp patch influ uh, influences fiber quality. If a farmer wanted soft linen quality fibers, he would plant his cannabis closer together. As a rule of thumb, if you plant for medical or recreational use, you plant one seed per five square yards. When planted for seed or, or when planted for seed, four to five feet apart. As a rule of thumb, if you planted for medical or recreational use, you planted one seed per five square yards. When planted for seed, four to five feet apart for each seed. I get it now. 120 to 180 seeds to a square yard are planted for rough cord cordage or coarse cloth. Finest linens or lace is grown up to 400 plants per the square yard and harvested between 80 and 100 days. By the late 1820s, the New America hand cotton gins invented by Eloy Whitney in, in 1793 were largely replaced by European-made industrial loom and cotton gins. A gin is a short for engine. Because of Europe's primary equipment machin machinery technology, tool and die making, um, they led over the Americas. So 50% of all chemicals used in American agricultural today are used in cotton growing. Hemp, hemp needs no chemicals and has few weed or insect enemies except for the U.S. government and DEA. For the first time, light cotton clothing could be produced at a less cost than hand rotting, rotting and hand separating hemp fibers to be hand spun on spinning wheels and journeys and jennies. However, because of the strength and softness, warmth and long lasting qualities, hemp continued to be the second most used natural fiber until the 1930s. After 1937, marijuana tax law, new DuPont plastic fibers under license since 1936 from German company IG Farben, patent surrenders were part of Germany's World War I reparations payments to, to America, replaced natural hemp fibers. Some 30% of IG Farben under Hitler was owned and financed by owned and financed by America's DuPont. DuPont also introduced nylon, invented in 1935, to market after they patented in 1938. So until 1883, from 75 to 90 percent of all paper in the world was made with cannabis, hemp, fiber, including that for books, Bibles, maps, paper money, stocks and bonds, newspapers, etc. The Gutenberg Bible in the 15th century uh, Pantagruel and the herb Pantagruelion Rebellious, the 16th century, century King James Bible, 7th, 17th century, Thomas Paine's pamphlets, The Rights of Men, Common Sense, The Age of Reason, 18th century, the works of Fitz Hugh Ludlow, Mark Twain, Vic, uh, Victor Hugo, Alexander Dumas, Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland's 19th century, and just about everywhere else imprinted uh, on pen, bleh, everywhere else also printed on hemp paper. The first draft of the Declaration of Independence, June 28, 1776, was written on Dutch hemp paper, as was the second draft completed on July 2nd, 1776. This was the document actually agreed to on that day and announced and released on July 4th, 1776. 
On July 19, 1776, Congress ordered the Declaration to be copied and engrossed on parchment. And that's an animal prepared, or a prepared animal skin. And this was the document actually signed by the delegates on August 2nd, 1776. Hemp paper lasted 50 to 100 times longer than most preparations of papyrus and was a hundred times easier and cheaper to make. What we, the colonial Americans and the rest of the world, used to make all of our paper from was the discarded sails and ropes sold by ship owners as scrap for recycling into paper. The rest, the rest of our paper came from worn out clothes, sheets, diapers, curtains, and rags made primarily from hemp and sometimes flax, and sometimes flax when sold to scrap dealers. Our ancestors were too thrifty to just throw away, to just throw anything away. So until the 1880s, any remaining scraps of clothes were mixed together and recycled into paper. Rag paper containing hemp fiber is the highest quality and longest lasting paper ever made. It can be torn when wet, but returns to its full strength when dry. Barring extreme conditions, rag paper remains stable for centuries. It will almost never wear out. Many U.S. government papers were written by law on hemp rag paper until the 1920s. It is generally believed that scholars believed by scholars that the early Chinese acknowledged or art of hemp paper making the first century A.D. 800 years before Islam discovered how, and 1200 to 1400 years before Europe was one of the two chief reasons that Oriental knowledge and science were vastly superior to that of the West for over 1400 years. Thus, the art of lasting, long-lasting hemp paper making, allowing the Orientals accumulated knowledge to be passed on, built upon, investigated, refined, challenged, and changed for generation after generation. In other words, the cumulative and comprehensive scholarship. The other reason that the Oriental knowledge and science sustained superiority to that of the West for 1400 years was that Roman Catholic Church forbade reading and writing for 90% of Europe's peoples. In addition, they burned, hunted down, and prohibited all foreign and domestic books, including their own Bible, for over 1200 years under the penalty and often used punishment of death. Virtually every city and town oops, um, in the world had an industry making hemp rope. Russia, however, was the world's largest producer and best quality manufacturer, supplying 80% of the Western world hemp from 1640 to 1940. Thomas Paine outlined four essential natural resources for the new nation in common sense in 1776. Cordage, iron, timber, and tar. Chief among these was hemp for cordage. He wrote, hemp flourishes even to rankness. We do not want for cordage. Far, um, from 70 to 90 percent of all rope, twine, and cordage was made from hemp until 1937. It was then replaced mostly by petrochemical fibers owned principally by DuPont under, under license from Germany's IG Verbaren Corporation patents and by Manila Abba Hemp. The paintings of Van Gogh, uh, Gainsborough, Rembrandt, etc. were primarily painted on hemp canvases, as were practically all canvas paintings. A uh, strong, lustrous fiber hemp withstands heat, mildew, insects, and is not damaged by light. Oil paintings on hemp or on flax canvas have uh, stayed in fine condition for centuries. For thousands of years, virtually all good paints and varnishes were made with hemp seed oil and or linseed oil. Um, for instance, in 1935 alone, 16, 116 million pounds, 58,000 tons of hemp seed were used in America's in America just for paint and varnish. The hemp drying oil business went principally to DuPont Petrochemicals. Now remember that, the DuPont name with the Petrochemicals and what they're doing to manipulate the law because this has been going on since DuPont's um, um, founding. So it, it's crazy that a business can, can 
take over as much as what DuPont has done. But just remember that. Um, <clears throat> National Institute of Oil Seed Products Congressional Testimony Against 1937 Marijuana Transfer Tax Law as a comparison consider that the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, um, along with all American, Tigger, Tigger, with all the American state and local police agencies claim to have seized for all of the 1996 700 plus ton of American grown marijuana seed plant root dirt clump and all even the DEA itself admits 94 to 90 per 97 percent even the DEA itself admits 94 to 97 percent of all marijuana hemp plants that have been seized and destroyed since the 1960s were growing completely wild and could not have been smoked as marijuana Congress and the Treasury Department were assured through, through secret testimony given by DuPont in 1935 and 1937 directly to Herman Oilfent, Chief Counsel for the Treasury Department, that hemp seed oil could be replaced with synthetic petrochemical oils made or principally by DuPont. So they're like outlawing something, they're getting on board to outlaw something and push their own thing, even though their thing is worse. And it actually has, it, it, that part of their business has not changed, which I think is crazy. Um, until about 1800, hemp seed oil was the most consumed lighting oil in America and the world, uh, in America and the world. From then until 1870, it was the second most consumed lighting oil, exceeded only by whale oil. Hemp seed oil lit the lamps of legendary Aladdin, Abraham the Prophet, and in real life, Abraham Lincoln. It was the brightest lamp oil. And it's helping save our whales. So, I mean, there's something else that we have there. If we're using hemp seed oil versus whale blubber, we, we're, we're actually helping us, you know, maintain a species here. So, hemp seed oil for lamps was replaced by petroleum, kerosene, etc. after 1859. Pennsylvania Oil Discovery and John D. Rockefeller's 1870 on National Petroleum Stewardship. And then this sends us to chapter 9, which we're going to get there when we get there. So, in fact, the celebrated botanist Luther Burbank stated, The seed of cannabis is prized in other countries for its oil and its neglect. Here it illustrates the same wonderful use of our agricultural resources. In the early 1900s, Henry Ford and other futuristic organic engineering geniuses recognized as their intellectual, intellectual scientific heirs still do today, um, an important point that up to 90% of all fossil fuels used in the world today, coal, oil, natural gas, etc., should long ago have been replaced with biomass such as corn stalks, cannabis, waste paper, and the like. Biomass can be converted into methane, methanol, or gasoline at a fraction of the current cost of oil, coal, or nuclear energy, especially when environmental costs are factored in, and its mandated use would end acid rain and sulfur-based smog and reverse the greenhouse effect on our planet right now. So does the Green New Deal um, target DuPont's use of these chemicals? I have not seen that. I will look again um, because I have looked through the, the, the Green New Deal. It's just a lot of stuff and I can't keep my eyes open for it. So I'll look again, but I didn't see any part of that DuPont, um, the, 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 DuPont the, the DuPont effect of them shutting down an industry so that we, they get it because this goes on throughout time. So remarkably, when considered on a plant-wide, climate-wide, soil-wide basis, cannabis is at least four and possibly many more times richer in sustainability, renewability, biomass, cellulose potential than its nearest rivals on the planet. Corn stalks, sugarcane, kenneth trees, etc. Solar gas, uh, 1980, oh this is Terry Lewis out. One product of paralysis, paralysis methanol is used today by most race, oh methanol used by most race cars and was used by American farmers and auto drivers routinely with petroleum and methanol options starting in the 1920s. Through the 1930s and even into the mid-1940s to run tens of thousands of auto, farm, and military vehicles until the end of World War II. 
Methanol can be uh, can even be converted into a high octane lead free gasoline using a catalytic process developed by Georgia Tech University in conjunction with Moyle, uh, mobile oil companies. From, from 1842 through the 1890s, extremely strong marijuana, then known as cannabis extractum, ex extractums and hashish extracts, tinctures and elixirs were routinely the second and third most used medicines in America for humans. From birth through childhood to old age and in veterinary medicine until the 1920s and longer in some cases. As stated earlier, for the last 3,000 years prior to 1842, widely vary, uh, varying marijuana extracts, bud, leaves, roots, etc., were the most commonly used, widely accepted medicines in the world for the majority of mankind's illnesses. However, in Western Europe, the Roman Catholic Church forbade the use of cannabis or any uh, medical treatment except for uh, alcohol or blood budding for 1,200 plus years. The U.S. Pharmacopoeia indicated that cannabis should be used for treating such ailments as fatigue, fits of coughing, rheumatism, um, asthma, delirium treatments, migraine headaches, and the cramps and depression associated with menstruation. Queen Victoria used cannabis resins for her menstrual cramps and PMS, and her reign was 1837 to 1901. Paralleled the enormous growth of the use of Indian cannabis medicine in the English-speaking world. In the 20th century, cannabis researchers had demonstrated therapeutic value and complete safety in treating many health problems, including asthma and glaucoma. Uh, glaucoma. So, uh, nausea, tremors, epilepsy, infection, stress, migraine, anorexia, depression, r rheumatism, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, and herpes. Hemp seed was regularly used in porridge, soups, and gruels by virtually all the people of the world up until the century, monks were required to eat hemp seed dishes three times a day to weave their clothes with it and to print their Bibles on paper made with its fiber. So let's take a look. Okay, we are not quite done with chapter one. However, I am having some serious technical difficulties with my phone. It does not want to record anymore. So I am going to head back down the mountain to see if I can fix the problem. Um, and then maybe I'll make it back up later, down, later today to finish this video. Um, this may be the end of it and we'll pick up here next time. I'm not sure, but don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I'm sorry, I was hoping this would go a little bit better, um, but I gotta deal with this technical issue because I've got like 15 different little segments here. So, as always guys, we will be back with the Hemp, um, The Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Herrer, um, read by Nicholas Dickens. I hope you guys have a great day. Mwah, mad love as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, it's your girl Nicola Dickens from Free My Cure. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel, whichever the case may be. So I'm sorry, we were having some major technical issues this afternoon or this morning. Well, no, it's more than, it was, it was like two o'clock this afternoon. So this is afternoon um, when I was doing our um, Emperor Wears No Clothes uh, by Jack Herrer story. Um, so I'm going to try it now and we're going to try to finish up chapter two so we, I can get this video processed and get it up for you guys. But first, Let's have some sour apple gelato. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that sound amazing? Let's see how amazing it is. So, I have a bug in my eye. I have the Traveler up here with me again. As you guys can see, I have it hooked up the same way that I did. I am going to try to warm up this bowl a little bit so I can put flour in it. So, as always, guys, fuck cancer, fuck anxiety, fuck depression, in with the good and out with the bad. Okay, that should be nice and warm and sticky. Okay, girl, get back up here. So this is sour apple gelato. I gotta stop before I spill it all. Let's get it up in that bowl of ours. Hi, Joe Pumpkin. Hi, how are you? So we're just gonna put that down there for now. Let's get this going. 
so here we have our traveler bong silicone bong with our little water bottle that we have we have a full bowl there as long as you can see it and not me so as always guys fuck cancer fuck anxiety fuck depression in with the good and out with the bad Okay, let's jump back in where we left off and hopefully I have fixed all of our technical difficulties with the camera at this point in time. I'm not sure, so let's hope. Phew, I think I need a drink of agua first. Okay, so, um, Hemp seed can be pressed for its highly nutritious vegetable oil, which contains the highest amount of essential fatty acid in the acids in the plant the in the plant kingdom. These essential oils are responsible for our immune responses and clear the arteries of cholesterol and plaque. The byproduct of pressing the oil from the seed is the highest quality protein seed cake can be sprouted or malted or ground or baked into cakes, breads, and casseroles marijuana seed protein is one of mankind's finest most complete and available to the body vegetable proteins hemp seed is the most complete single food source for human nutrition um, hemp seed was until 1937 prohibited uh, prohibited law the world's number one bird seed for both wild and domestic birds it was their favorite of any seed food on the planet four million pounds of hemp of hemp seed for songbirds were sold at retail in the U.S. in 1937. Birds will pick hemp seeds out and eat them first while a pile of mixed seeds lay at the bottom. Birds in the wild live longer and breed more with hemp seed in their diet, using the oil for their feathers and their overall health. Congressional testimony in 1937 says the songbirds won't sing without it. The bird food companies told Congress the result of sterilized cannabis seeds continue to be imported into the U.S. from Italy, China, and other countries. Hemp seed produces no observable high for humans or birds. Only the most minute traces of THC are in the seed. Hemp seed is also the favorite fish bait in Europe. Anglers buy pecks of hemp seed at bait stores, then throw handfuls into the river and pond fish come thrashing for it. The hemp seeds are, are caught by hook. No other bait is as effective, making hemp seed generally the most desirable and most nutritious food for humans, birds, and fish. Because one acre of hemp produces as much cellulose fiber pulp as 4.1 acres of trees, hemp is the perfect material to replace trees for pressed board, particle board, and concrete construction molds. Practical, inexpensive, fire-resistant construction material with excellent thermal and sound insulating qualities is made by heating and compressing plant fibers to create strong construction paneling, replacing drywall and plywood. William B. Cone of Code, Code Redwood Lumber, Inc. Uh, near Eugene, Oregon, in conjunction with Washington State University, has demonstrated the superior strength, flexibility, economy of hemp composite building materials compared to wood fiber or even as beams. Oh, and I haven't shown guys any of the pictures. I feel so bad. So, here, my, my various much apologies. So, as you can see, I read through a lot of this, and then um, I bring to you guys what I think is really good. And there's a lot of really good information um, in this book. So, and you'll see where I have some notes off into the sides in places because it's something I wanted to try on my own. Um, so, let's see. Hemp has been used throughout history for carpet, ba or for carpet backing. Hemp fiber, the, 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 fiber has potential in, in the manufacture of strong, rot-resistant carpeting, eliminating the poisonous fumes 
of burning synthetic materials in a house or commercial fire along with allergic reactions associated with new synthetic carpeting. Plastic plumbing pipe, PVC pipes, can be manufactured using renewable hemp cellulose as the chemical feedstocks replacing non-renewable coal or petroleum-based chemical feedstocks. So we can envision a house of the future built, plum built, plumbed, painted, and furnished with the world's number one renewable resource, hemp. The American Dec uh, Declaration of Independence recognizes um, the inalienable, inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Subsequent court decisions have interfered with the rights to privacy and choice from this U.S. Constitution and its amendments. Many artists and writers have used cannabis for creative stimula stimulus, stimulation, stimulation, sorry, <laughs> from the writers of the world's religious masterpieces to our most er ill irrelevant sadr sadists. These include Lewis Carroll and his hookah smoking caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland, plus Victor Hugo and Alexander Dumas, such jazz greats as Louis Armstrong's Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington, and Jean Krepta, and the pa uh, pattern continues right up to modern day. Artists and musicians such as the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Eagles, Doobie Brothers, Bob Marley, Jefferson, Air, Jefferson Airplane. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I've heard of Jefferson, but not Jefferson Airplane. Willie Nelson, Buddy Rich, Country Joe and Fish, Joe Welsh, David Carradine, David Bowie, Iggy Pop, Lola uh, Folana, Hunter S. Thompson, Peter Tosh, The Grateful Dead, of course, as we all know, uh, Cypress Hill, Sinead O'Connor, Con Black Crows, Snoop Dogg, and Los Marijuanos etc. Of course, smoking marijuana only enhances creativity for some and not for others. I actually, when I'm doing most of my writing, uh, you will find that I am usually pretty, pretty stoned. It does help um, with that creativity, but it also really kind of helps bring out some of the memories so that we, I make sure I get them a little bit more correct. Um, I'm, I am ADD and bipolar, and I find that cannabis, one of the biggest things that cannabis helps me do is it puts that trigger in my brain to stop and think, um, because I don't otherwise. I say stuff off, you know, and I think we all kind of do to a point, um, but I will, I'll jump off. Cannabis puts that two second, you know, pause into my brain to go, okay, think about it before it comes out, and it helps a little bit with me, but I'm able to really dig down deep when I'm writing and it's a lot of fun. I can, and you know, I can sit down and close my eyes and I can just feel my body and see how it's gonna work. What are you doing, Tigger? <laughs> this is where it gets hard. Also really hits my throat. Oh, good night. Okay. Okay. But throughout history, various prohibitions and temperance groups have attempted and occasionally succeeded in banning the preferred relaxation stuff substance of others like alcohol, tobacco, and cannabis. But throughout history, various prohibitions and oh whoops, my bad, I apologize. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln responded to this kind of repressive mentality in December of 1840 when he said, Prohibition goes beyond the bounds of reason in that it attempts to control a man's appetite by legislation and make a crime out of things that are not crimes. A prohibition law strikes a blow at the very principles upon which our government was founded. Now, that is a hundred percent fact. A hundred percent. You can't take it any other way. Prohibition does that. It's exactly what it does. Is it prohibits you from doing something. Now, when a government comes in and wants to do a, pro a prohibition, there's usually a reason behind it. Right now, we're in a kind of an opioid uh, pandemic, but it definitely um, pro going on prohibition simply because 
I can tell you for a fact that the amount of opioids actually prescribed to me during this last transplant surgery was so much less than anything I've ever been prescribed before, which is fine. Um, I do believe in putting those regulations in place. However, um, we also have to remember that life and pursuit of happiness that we are entitled to, um, our, inalienable, our inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is something that I will always hold dear because that's something that is given to us. That, you know, there's so many things, that's so much in our constitution that covers us. We are a constitutional republic. Um, we're not a, democr a, a d democracy. And I've had a lot of people ask me about that. We are not actually a democracy. We are a constitutional republic. So this is how they change law by legislation. That's how this all works. So prohibition goes beyond the bounds of reason in that it attempts to control a man's appetite by legislation and makes a crime out of things that are not crimes. A prohibition law strikes, strikes a blow at the very principles upon which our government was founded. Yes, I read that twice because it is a very, very strong phrasing there. We believe that in a competitive market with all facts known, people will rush to buy long-lasting biodegradable pop tops or Mary Jeans. Take her, Rafi, come here. Okay, sorry. Um, Etc. made from a plant without pesticides or herbicides. Some of the companies who have led the way with these products are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're almost done. Ecolution, Hempstead, Mar uh, Mary Mills, Ohio Hempery, Two Star Dog, Head Case, and in Germany, Han Fuhas. And I'm not even going to try to finish that one because I will mess that up something fierce. So it's time we put capitalism to the test and let the unrestricted market of supply and demand, as well as green ecological consciousness, decide the future of the planet. A cotton shirt in 1776 cost $100 to $200 while a hemp shirt cost 50 cents 50 cents to to a dollar to buy by the 1830s cooler lighter cotton shirts were on par in price with the warmer heavier hemp shirts providing a competitive choice people were able to choose their garments based upon the particular qualities they wanted in a fabric today we have no choice the role of hemp and other natural fibers should be determined by the market of supply and demand and personal tastes and values, not by the undue influences of prohibition laws, federal subsidies, and huge tariffs that make natural fabrics from replacing synthetic fibers, which is a huge resource in or to help this, this, this world of ours. So... 70 years of government suppression of information has rebuilt or resulted in virtually no public knowledge of the incredible incredi potential of hemp fibers it uses. By using 100% hemp or mixing hemp with organic cotton, you will be able to pass on your shirts, pants, and other clothes to your grandchildren. Intelligent spending other, um, could essentially replace the use of petrochemical synthetic fibers such as nylon polyester with tougher, cheaper, cool, absorbent, breathing, biodegradable, natural fibers. China, Italy, and Eastern Europe, European countries such as Hungary, Romania, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Russia currently make millions of dollars worth of sturdy hemp and hemp cotton textiles and could be making billions of dollars worth annually. These countries built upon their traditional farming and weaving skills while the U.S. tries to force the extinction of this plant to prop up destructive synthetic technologies. Even cannabis cotton blends textiles were still not cleared for direct sale in the United States until 1991. The, Ch um, the Chinese, for instance, were forced by tax, tax it agreed to send us inferior Ramy cottons. As 1990 edition of Emperor went to press, garments containing less than 55% cannabis hemp arrived from China and Hungary. In 1922, as we, uh, as we went to press, many different grades of 100% hemp 
fabric had arrived directly from China and Hungary. Now in 2007, hemp fabric is in booming demand all over the world, arriving from Romania, Poland, Italy, Germany, and etc. Hemp was recognized as the hottest fabric of the 1990s by Rolling Stones, Times, Newsweek, Paper, Detour, Details, Mademoiselle, The New York Times, The Los Angeles Times, Der Spiegel, Ed Infitum, all have run over and over major stories on industrial nutritional hemp. Additionally, hemp grown for biomass could fuel a tradition or the a trillion dollar per year in energy industry while improving air quality and dis, uh, distributing the wealth to rural areas as their surrounding communities and away from centralized power monopolies. More than other plant more than any other plant on earth, hemp holds the promise to of a sustainable ecology and economy. In conclusion, we must reciprocate our original premise with our challenge to the world to prove us wrong. If all fossil fuels and their derivatives, as well as feeds for paper and construction, were banned in order to save the planet, reverse the greenhouse effect, and stop deforestation, then there is only one known annually renewable natural resource that is capable of providing the overall majority of the world's paper and textiles meeting all of the world's transport transportation, industrial, and home energy needs, while simultaneously, simultaneously reducing pollution, rebuilding the soil, <clears throat> and cleaning the atmosphere all at the same time. And the substance is the same one that did it before, cannabis, hemp, marijuana. Um, so here's the picture on that page. So now we're just going to do the Battle of the Bulletin 404, or how World War I cost us hemp and the forests. The setting. In 1917, the world was battling World War I. In this country, industrialists just beset with the minimum wage and graduated income tax were sent into a tailspin. Progressive ideals were lost as the United States took its place on the world stage to struggle for commercial supremacy. Tigger, come in. Where's your athlete? Okay, I see him. It's against this backdrop that the first 20th century hemp drama was played. The Players. The story begins in 1916, soon after the release of USDA Bulletin 404. Near San Diego, California, a 50-year-old German immigrant named Jane George... Schlechten had been working on a simple yet brilliant invention. Schlechten had spent 18 years and $400,000 on a decorticator, a machine that could strip the fiber from nearly any plant, leaving the pulp behind. To build it, he had developed an encyclopedic knowledge of fibers and paper making. His desire was to stop felling, felling of the forest for paper, which he believed to be a crime. His native German, Germany was well advanced in forestry, and Schlechten knew that destroying the forest meant destroying the needed watershed. Watersheds. Henry T Timken, a wealthy industrialist and inventor of the roller bearing got wind of Schlechten's invention and went to meet the inventor in February of 1917. Temkin, Temkin, yeah, the decorticator as a revolutionary discovery that would improve conditions for mankind. Timkin offered Schlechten the chance to grow a hundred acres of hemp on his ranch in the fertile farmlands of Imperial Valley, just east of San Diego, so that Schlechten could test his invention. Shortly thereafter, Temkin met with the newspaper Grant E.W. Scripps and his longtime associate Milton McRae at, at the Miramar Script home in San Diego. Scripps, then 63, had accumulated the largest chain of newspapers in the country. Timken hoped to increase Scripps in making newsprint from the hemp herds. Turn of the century, newspaper barons needed huge amounts of paper to deliver, 
to deliver their swelling circulations. Nearly 30% of the 4 million tons of paper manufactured in 1909 was new newsprint. That's a lot of paper. That's a lot of newsprint. By 1914, the circulation of daily newspapers had increased by 17%, over 1,909 figures to over 28 million copies by 1917. The price of newsprint was rapidly rising and McRae, who had been investigating owning a paper mill since 1904, was concerned. Sowing the seeds. In May, after further meetings with Timken, Scripps asked McRae to investigate the possibility of using the decorditator in the manufacturing of the newsprint. McRae quickly became excited about the plan. He uh, called the decorticator a great invention which will not only render great services to this country but it will be very profitable financially it may rec uh, revolutionize existing conditions um, on August 3rd as harvest time neared the meeting was arranged between Schnickton and McRae and the newspaper manager Ed Chakes without Schlichten's knowledge McRae had his secretary record record the three-hour meeting Steno stenographically. Schlichten's voluminous knowledge found to date is reprinted fully in Appendix 1, which we're not going to go over right now. <laughs> um, Schlichten had thoroughly studied many kinds of plants for paper, among them corn, cotton, yucca, espana, baca, bacata, hemp, it seemed, was his favorite. Um... The hemp herd is a practical success that will make paper of a high grade than new stock, he, said it, he stated. His hemp paper was even better than that produced for the USDA Bulletin 404, he claimed, because the decorticator eliminated the redding process, leaving behind short fibers and natural glue that held the paper together. At 1917 levels of hemp production, Schlichten anticipated making 50,000 tons of paper yearly at a retail price of $25 a ton. This was less than 50% of the price of newsprint at that time. And every acre of hemp turned to paper, Schlichten added, would preserve five acres of forest. McRae was very impressed by Schlichten, the man who didn't dined with presidents and captains, captains, yeah, captains of industry wrote to Timpton. Timpton, I was to say without equivocation that Mr. Schlichten impressed me as a man of great intellectual and ability. And so far as I can see, he has created and constructed a wonderful machine. He assigned Chase to spend much time as he could with Schlichten and prepare a report. Harvest time. By August, after three months of growth, Timpton's hemp crop had grown to its full height of 14 feet, and he was highly optimistic about its prospects. Three months, 14 feet. Wow. That's, yeah, wow. He hoped to travel to California to watch the crop being decorticated, seeing, him, seeing himself as the benefactor to mankind who could, or who would enable people to work shorter hours and have more time for spiritual development. Scribbs, on the other hand, was not, a, not as, was not as optimistic frame of mind. He had lost faith in the government that he had believed he was leading that, that he believed was leading the country to financial ruin uh, because of the war and that would take 40 percent of his profits in income tax. And in an August 14th letter to his sister Ellen, he said, "When Mr. McRae was talking to me about the increase of the price of white paper, that was that was pending i told him i was just fool enough not to be worried about a thing of that kind the price of paper was expected to rise 50 percent costing scripts his entire year's profit 100 no one million one hundred thousand two hundred or twenty five thousand dollars rather than develop a new technology he took the easy way out and the penny press lord simply planned to raise the prices of his papers from one cent to two. The demise. On August 28, Ed Chase sent 
his full report to Scripps and McRae. The younger man also was taken with the process. I have seen a wonderful yet simple invention. I believe it will revolutionize many of the processes of feeding, clothing, and supplying other wants of mankind. Chase witnessed the decorticator produce seven tons of hemp herds in two days at full, produ at full production. Schlichten anticipated each machine would produce five tons per day. Um, Chase figured hemp would, would easily supply Scripps West Coast newspapers with leftover pulp for side businesses. Um, he estimated the newsprint would cost between $25 and $35 per ton and proposed asking an East Coast paper mill to experiment for them. McRae, however, seemed to have gotten the message or seemed to have gotten the message that his boss was no longer interested in making paper from hemp. He res his response to Chase Chase's report was cautious. Much will be determined in the practic practicality, practicality by the cost of transportation, manufacture, etc., etc., which we cannot discern without due investigation. Perhaps when his ideals met with the hard work and or the hard work of development, the semi-retired McRae backed off. By September, uh, uh, by September, Timpkin's crop was producing one ton of fiber and four tons of herd paper acre. And he was trying to interest Scripps in opening a paper mill in San Diego. McRae and Chase traveled to Cleveland and spent two hours convincing, Pit convincing Tipkin that while hemp herds were usable for other types of paper, they could not be made into newsprint cheaply enough. Perhaps the eastern mill at which they experimented wasn't encouraging. After all, it was set up to make wood pulp paper. By this time, Timpton, too, was hurt by the wartime economy. He expected to pay 54% income tax and was trying to borrow $2 million at 10% interest to retool for war machines. The man who a few weeks earlier could not wait to get to California to no longer, or the man who a few weeks earlier could not wait to get to California no longer expected to go west at all that winter. He told McRae, I think I will be a damn, I will be too damn busy in this section of the country looking after business. The decorticator resurfaced again in the 1930s when it was touted as a machine that would make hemp a billion dollar crop in articles like mechanical engineering and popular mechanics. Until the 1993 edition of the Emperor and Emperor, the decorticator was believed to be a new discovery at the time. Once again, Beg uh, Bergen calling hemp industry was halted, this time by Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. <sighs> Why not use hemp to reverse the greenhouse effect and save the world? In early 1989, Jack Herrer and Maria Farrow put this question to Steve Rawlings the highest ranking officer in the U.S. Department of Agriculture, who was in charge of reversing the greenhouse effect. At the USDA World Research Facility in Beltsville, Maryland, first we introduced ourselves and told him we were writing for Green Political Party News. Then he, we asked Rawlings if, he, if you could have any choice that would be ideal way to stop or reverse the greenhouse effect. He said, stop cutting down trees and stop using fossil fuels. Well, why don't we? There's no viable substitute for wood or paper for fossil fuels. Why don't you just use an annual plant and biomass to make fuel? Well, that would be ideal, he agreed. Unfortunately, there is nothing you can use that can produce high enough materials. Well, what would you say if there was such a plant that could substitute for all the wood pulp paper, all fossil fuels would make most of our fibers naturally, make everything from dynamite to plastic, 
grows in all 50 states and that one acre of it would replace 4.1 acres of trees and that if you used about 6% of the U.S. land to raise, to raise it as an energy crop, even on a marginal land, this plant would produce all 75 quadrillion billion BTUs needed to run America every year. Would, would that help save the planet? That would be ideal, but there is no such plant. Well, we think there is. Yeah? What is it? Hemp. Hemp? He mused for a moment. I would have never thought of it. You know, I think you're right. Hemp could be the plant that could do it. Wow, this is a great idea. We were excited as we outlined the information and de uh, delineated a po uh, potential of hemp for paper, fiber, fuel, food, paint, etc. And how it could be applied to balance the world's ecosystems and restore the atmosphere's oxygen balances um, with almost no disruption of the standards of living which most Americans have become accustomed to. And that's a big one. In essence, Rawlings agreed that our information was probably correct and could very well work. He said it was a wonderful idea and I think it might work, but of course you can't use it. You're kidding, we responded. Why not? Well, Mr. Her Herrer, did you know that hemp is also marijuana? Yes, of course I know. I've been writing about it for about 40 hours a week for the past 17 years. Well, you know marijuana is illegal, don't you? You can't use it. N not even to save the world? No, it's illegal, he sternly informed me. You cannot use something illegal. Not even to save the world. We, we asked, stunned. Not, no, not even to save the world. It's illegal. You can't use it, period. Don't get me wrong, it's a great idea, he went on, but they'll never let you do it. Why don't you go ahead and tell the Secretary of Agriculture that a crazy man from California gave you a documentation that showed hemp might be able to save the planet, and that your first reaction is that he might be right, and it needs some serious study. What would you say? Well, I don't think I'd be here very long if I did that. After all, I'm an officer of the government. Sorry about that. Well, why not call up the information on your computer at your own USDA library? That's where we got all the information in the first place. He said, I can't sign that information out. Well, why not? We did. Mr. Hare, you're a citizen. You can sign out for anything you want. But I'm an officer of the Department of Agriculture. Someone's going to want to know why I want this information, and then I'll be gone. Finally, we agreed to send him all the information we got from the USDA library um, if he would just take a look at it. He said he would, but when we got called back a month later, he said he, still not, he had still not opened the box that we sent him and that he would be sending it back to us unopened because he didn't want to be responsible for the information now that the Bush administration was replacing him with its own man. We asked him if he would pass on the information to his successor, and he replied, absolutely not. In the end, he said, if you really want to save the planet with hemp, then you, hemp marijuana activists, would find a way to grow it without the narc sick top. Um, so basically the bud. They take the bud off and find a way of, of doing it that way. Um, and, and then you can use it. This is a kind of frightened and frightening irresponsibility we're up against in this government. So that is chapter two. We did finish it. Yay! Um, I plan on coming back out tomorrow and recording chapter three and getting them up here for you guys. I, I do apologize. It has been a very long road. I, ha I am still healing. I can feel it when I walk and I move, and it's still very uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm getting there, getting there, I promise. So let's go ahead and shut the chapter two down. I'm gonna go have dinner with my friends and family over there for a little while. Um, because I considering doing this for like four hours today because I couldn't get nothing to work. So I hope you guys have a beautiful night. 
Remember, tomorrow is Memorial Day. We will have a whole Memorial Day thing going on. Mm, thank you to everybody who has served in, in our military, um, our veterans. Um, are you coming up to say hi? Oh, yeah, you are. My little snuggle bunny here. Yeah, we're going back here in a minute. As always, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. I promise you guys I will be here more often. Mad love as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. I gotta move. I gotta move. Thank you.